What's up? My name is Technober here for Troubleshoot and welcome back to another video. In this video, I'll be showing you how to optimize vRising for the best possible performance and of course the lowest input latency, etc, etc. There's a couple of things here that I'd like to highlight. As it is a pretty well optimized game, it runs on practically anything. You can still do more to get even more out of it if you find out that you're struggling. Before we get into the actual in-game optimization, which is the main part of this video, if you haven't already optimized Windows or your graphics card, in the description down below, you'll find a link to a Windows 10, a Windows 11, and an NVIDIA graphics card optimization guide, as well as anything else extra that may help you. I would highly recommend checking those out if you haven't already. Anyways, without further ado, I'll head into Steam and fire up vRising. Of course, if you haven't already, this intro screen is one of the things that I definitely recommend you turn off, which is the first thing on the list here. Head into the options menu, then general, and inside of here you'll see skip intro cinematic. Click here to turn this off, and once it's selected, we're pretty much done on the general tab. There's nothing else here that you need to change other than what your preference dictates. Heading across to the graphics tab, at the very top we have quality preset. For me, it has high auto selected, and I believe that it will auto select something that closely fits your computer, or at least as much as it can guess. I have a 3080 Ti in my computer, which is definitely overkill for practically everything, but everything I go through in this guide will help you all the way down to the lowest end computer, and you should see a huge boost in FPS by the end of it. Screen resolution at the very top and a display should be set to the same resolution as your monitor and no lower. Setting it to an unsupported resolution or something that's smaller than your display could end up blurring a lot of what you're seeing and usually leads to a worse experience. So. Leave this to absolute last if you need more FPS. Window mode should be set to exclusive full screen mode and you'll immediately see a boost in FPS even on the main menu here. The brightness is of course user preference and won't have an effect on FPS. Then quality, ambient occlusion, we can leave on medium. You don't really need this setting too high, though it shouldn't have too much of an FPS effect. The ones that will have quite a big FPS effect here are shadow and volumetrics. Both of these over here are usually very costly, especially shadows, and shadows aren't usually something you're going to be staring at all the time, so I definitely recommend dropping this down to low. Volumetrics quality, I would set to medium if you like some light to look good around the world, otherwise you can drop this down to low for extra FPS. For me, I'll be leaving this on medium. Bloom, of course, is really user preference. The higher this is usually, the less you can pretty much see. So I'd recommend dropping this down to medium if you still like your bloomy lights, or you can set it down to low and forget about it. Scrolling down to advanced, the last section, and the aliasing should definitely be set to none unless you absolutely hate jagged edges. This does nothing but blur your screen ever so slightly to smooth out edges, but it usually does cost a ton of FPS to do so. AMD FSR will be getting back here in just a moment. Vertical sync should absolutely be turned off unless you're experiencing screen tearing where the top half of your screen doesn't match with the bottom half. They come in at different times, resulting in a tearing effect. Motion blur should be turned off unless you like that and depth of field as well should also be turned off. These shouldn't have a huge effect on FPS. However, usually they can affect people anywhere from motion sickness to just not seeing anywhere near as good in the normal game. High quality vegetation, of course, is user preference, but I would recommend turning this off for better FPS. Same goes for low quality atmosphere, as this should boost your FPS quite a bit, you'll need to turn this on if you need extra FPS. Though this does have a pretty big effect on the game. Then blood effects enabled, that's more user preference, this isn't too big. Screen shake, of course, once again, user preference. I'd leave this at 100 or maybe 50%, maybe even set it off if you're struggling with motion sickness, etc. Otherwise, have this set somewhere wherever your preference is. Crank it up if you so feel like it. Cloth quality and cloth update rate are both things that are quite computationally expensive. Having these higher will cause you to lose quite a few FPS, so I'd recommend setting these all the way down to low unless you really like seeing cloth flap around. Once again, that is user preference. The sound tab doesn't have much here other than maybe sound in background that you might want to turn off if you don't want to hear the game when you alt-tabbed out of it. 
Beyond that, there's not really much else to talk about. Everything is pretty much optimized as is, and we can hop straight into a game wherever you were. If you'd like to test things out, I'd recommend going into a private world, probably PvE or PvP if you don't want to get attacked by random things. And of course, set a password or set it to only solo play if you don't want anyone else joining. You can go through custom settings if you'd like to change how things spawn to see what thousands of creatures around you do, etc. Or you can just start a new game, hop in, and once again start messing around with your settings while you're in-game to see what effect they have on it. There we go, now that we're in-game, I've come here specifically to show you the last effect, which was AMD FSR. This setting is absolutely amazing, and I love any game that includes it, because it gives you a huge performance increase for practically free. AMD FSR, unlike NVIDIA DLSS, can be used on any graphics card to render your game at a smaller resolution, blow it up, and use magic to make it look just as good, albeit to a certain extent. This is what the game looks like on ultra quality, the highest AMD FSR setting, as you can see, ultra quality, and the lower you go down on this list, the more FPS you'll get, but the more worse the game will appear, more glitchy, as it's being rendered at a much smaller resolution and scaled all the way back up. You don't need to be playing at 4K to use this, for example, but it should give you an FPS boost really well, from practically wherever you are. There's not a huge amount happening here, especially with movement, so maybe things aren't noticeable. But if I look around too quickly, you may notice some artifacts, especially around my character itself. This is with the performance mode selected. However, heading back to ultra quality, the default, these artifacts and weird things are now gone. So progress has been made. This is an absolutely great tool and I definitely recommend playing around with this as it's basically free FPS at these higher qualities being ultra quality and quality. Anything below that you'll usually start noticing artifacts and weird glitches. But anyways, that's really about it for this quick guide. Ultimately, you should have gained a few, if not a ton of free FPS, and that's really about it. Thank you all for watching, my name's been Techno here for Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!